smart people, Andrew here. Why does grass taste bad? That was my audition for to be the next Vsauce. Thank you for watching. Bye. What's going on, smart people? My name is Andrew, and today's a pretty cool day because I'm about to go to Jefferson Lab to meet with my advisor and talk about my new research project. I'm taking my camera with me, but realistically, it's going to be one clip of me showing you the parking lot of JLab, and then the next clip is going to be me back here. It'll be fun. Let's go. All right. As promised, here is the parking lot of Jefferson Lab. I know you were looking forward to this. I'm, ha I'm really happy to be able to give this to you and be the hero that Gotham deserves. Now I'm going to go meet with my advisor. I'll see you guys in a little bit and I'll explain all about what my project is, hopefully. I'm home now. I was at JLab for a lot longer than I thought I was going to be today. I thought it was going to be more of a, hey Andrew, this is your project. Bye. But what it was, was, hey Andrew, here's a book. Take notes on this book for a few hours and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. To be honest, I still don't really know what my project is about, but I, I sort of do. If you want to understand the internal structure of something in physics, what you can do is you can do a scattering experiment where you direct a beam of some type of particles at your target. Uh, if it's deep and elastic, which is what we're concerned with, that means you're breaking the target apart and then you're going to be making measurements on all of those outgoing particles. The trick here mathematically is to map the kinematics of those outgoing particles to the structure of that target atom or that target nucleus that you're working with. In other words, you have your well-defined energy momentum angle of the incoming particles plus some unknown conditions of the internal structure of the thing you're hitting it with equals the measurements of all this stuff going out. So you're solving for what the stuff on the inside has to be in order for all that stuff to agree with each other and for all that stuff to make sense. In order to do all this, there's a few things you have to consider. One is that the moving pieces of this puzzle are moving very fast. Okay, so you can't get away with not using special relativity in these types of calculations. Then you're also dealing with things that are very small. Okay, so inherently this is a quantum mechanical problem. And then these nuclei are bound together from the strong force because okay, that's the force that holds uh, protons and neutrons together. When you put all this stuff together and you wrap it up in a nice little bow, you get quantum chromodynamics, which is a quantum field theory. Now, I'm not going to begin to pretend I understand how to quantize fields or things like that yet. Part of that is, well, part of the goal of this project is for me to understand how a quantum field theory works. But the bigger part of my project that actually gets to help people is taking what people have already done with quantum field theory, with quantum chromodynamics specifically, uh, and there's been a lot of stuff that's been written in Mathematica to describe very specific things, and one of the goals of this project is I need to translate what was written in Mathematica into Python so it can be applied to a, a broader range of things. Then we're going to take my translated code from Python to calculate new things. If it all sounds very broad and hard to understand, I don't blame you because frankly I don't understand that much either at this point. Uh, it'll be fun to see how my understanding of what I'm doing progresses throughout this whole project because quantum field theory is just a different beast altogether. That is just leaps and bounds beyond what an undergraduate is expected to understand or grapple with, which is partly why I spent three and a half hours going through a book on deep and elastic scattering and made it a solid eight pages into the book. What is kind of cool though is that I'll be working with a graduate student at ODU, someone I've met before, he's a really cool guy. Uh, he's not all that familiar with Python, so what my advisor says is throughout the process I'm going to have to show him how, how the syntax of Python works. Basically, I'm going to teach him Python a little bit. I think he's already familiar with C++, so it shouldn't be too much of a learning curve. I think it's easier for someone who knows C++ to learn Python than it is for someone who knows Python to learn C++. Basically, this project is a big jump from my current understanding of physics. So this is either going to... No, this is going to elevate me to a new understanding of physics that I don't have at the moment. And I'm really excited to be able to sort of track this progress uh, throughout the internship. Throughout the next week or so, I plan on developing a deeper understanding of just scattering theory in general. Luckily, my thesis, my senior thesis, was all scattering, so I'm not too unfamiliar with the process. 
But uh, my senior thesis was non-relativistic, so I need to refresh on my relativity a little bit. And then after that, I'm going to start going over classical field theory and just building up from there. It's going to be fun. It's fun to take on challenges that are just objectively way beyond where you're at currently. Uh, let me know in the comments section if there's something like this that you can relate to that you're currently experiencing. And as always, I'll see you guys there.